Hey there, I'm Ken. This is Canadian Retro Things. I hope everybody out there watching this video is having a great day. Today, I'm going to continue trying to get my Commodores working. In the last video, I had three Commodore computers, two that were complete and one that was just a board. Well, now I have two completely working Commodores and one non-functional board. If you remember from the last video when I gave this thing power and plugged it into the TV, it was a completely dead black screen, so much so that a dead test cartridge didn't even do anything. Then I took some uh, readings of the voltages on the board and by the time they were getting to this end of the board, they had dropped by over half a volt, so something was wrong because they were all proper on this end. So, today we're going to see if we can figure out what's going on there and see if we can get this board working. But first, I want to give a big shout out to the sponsor of today's video, PCB Way. PCB Way, where you can get PCBs printed starting at only $5 for 10 boards. Often, when you're fixing old computers like the Commodore 64 I'm working on, you'll find that some parts are beyond fixing and cannot be found today. This means you may have to make an adapter board so something currently available will fit, and you need a reliable and quick place to have those PCBs printed. Starting at only $5 for 10 boards, with turnaround times of only 24 hours, why would you go anywhere else? So visit PCB Way today at www.pcbway.com. Just to reiterate what uh, we saw last time, I'm going to take a couple of really quick voltage readings here. So um, I've got the power hooked up. This time you can actually see my multimeter. So yay, bonus, I fired my old cameraman. That was myself, of course. He is fired and I have hired me to do the camera work. All right, so first we'll check. We're only worried about the five volts, so we're gonna go with the uh, five volt voltage regulator here. 12 in, 4.98 out. Going into the VIC-2 here on pin 40, we have uh, the need of a steadier hand, 4.96. Now we'll pop up here and test at the cassette port. Four point six. So at the four, it's four point six at the cassette port. And I can already tell you, ooh, these ROM chips are getting very hot. That one not so much. But uh, so the next thing to do is because the uh, power is dropping over here we're going to take these socketed set chips out i actually just felt that with having my hand over top of it i could feel the heat coming off those rom chips already so i think there might be a problem there but we're going to take out the uh, rom chips and this one chip here the um, u2 and uh, then we'll retest the voltages and see what we get if it is one of these chips that's um, acting up, then the voltages up here at the cassette port should be closer to what we're getting over here. Now, if it's one of these other chips here, normally I'd want to remove this one and this one as well, but they're not socketed, so that'll be kind of a last resort thing. Four point eight two. Well, that is basically the minimum of what we want. You would want it between about four point eight and five point two would be ideal. Let's test going into the PLA here. What voltages do we have right now? Four point eight two. Sixty five ten. Four point eight two. This ROM chip, 
Um, unfortunately, my, uh, my, um, probes are a little too big for those chips. 4.81 for those sockets. 4.81. I do, however, have a, uh, solution for that. So I've got some pin headers here. I'll be right back. All right, well, I have a single pin header here that I've cut off. We can stick that into the socket. Now, Four point eight two. Four point eight two. So we've got good power going into all of these. So first, let's put this chip back in. Everything looks good. Give her some power. Four point eight one. So that chip is not impeding our electrical progress. Now, chip, um, what is this? This is U3. Uh, okay. Four point six seven. So that chip seems to drop the power significantly. This is the one that got really hot. So I would have thought this was the one that maybe was bad, but Four point seven two. So this chip in there doesn't seem to drop nearly as significantly as this one, but it's still dropping below that four point eight that we want. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to get my known working machine. I'm going to test both these ROMs in it, and once I dis discover if they work or not. Then I'm going to get the PLA, put it in this board, and whatever working ROMs I have into these slots and see if this board works or not. Hey there, it's me, Ken from Canadian Retro Things. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that is supporting my channel through watching videos, commenting, liking, and subscribing. But did you know that there is another way that you can support my channel? I now have merchandise. That's right, you can get a t-shirt with my channel logo on it. Is a t-shirt not something you're looking for? You don't want it cluttering up your room? Why not try a travel coffee mug 
for those long trips to retro gaming shows to help keep you awake. Mmm, that's good. Or maybe you would like a water bottle to keep you hydrated during those long gaming sessions or coding sessions. Mmm, that's good. So, check below the video. You will find a link to my shop where you can buy these and more. Okay, I have my known working board here. Power plugged into it, hooked up to the TV. I've taken the uh, ROM, which is, this is the basic ROM. I've taken that from the other computer, put it in here. Let's try it out. Oh, well, that's certainly uh, more than we were getting. I'm getting a garbled screen. Let's see what happens if I put in my Retro Rewind diagnostic cartridge. Let's see if it will work or not. Nope, we're getting a black screen now. Interesting. Try that again. Oh, now we're just getting a plain old black screen. And that chip's already significantly hotter than the other chips. Let's see what happens if we put in the dead, oops, we already tried diagnostic, let's try the dead set, dead test side. Nothing, okay, well, I'm going to say that chip is bad. So let's put the working one back in there and try out, this would be the kernel ROM. See if it works or not. Be right back. Ah oh, yes, and also a really, really quick little test here. Just double check that I didn't damage this computer at all. It's working fine. So now we will change out the kernel ROMs and see what happens. All right, here we go. We have the kernel ROM from the other computer in here now. Let's test it out. Still giving me nothing. Let's see if the diagnostic cartridge will give us anything. All right, absolutely nothing. So now the thing to do is take my working kernel ROM and basic ROM, put them in the other computer, bring it over here and try it out. And uh, yeah, let's see if that works. Because we have now discovered that two of the ROMs on that other computer are no good. All right, we have everything hooked up now. Let's see what happens. Okay, now we are just getting a garbled screen, but hey, we've got a flashing cursor, sort of, in the one side there. The border's right, the color is right. So we are currently a heck of a lot closer. Now let's see if our diagnostic cartridge will do anything or the dead test cartridge.
All right, so it, it is reading the diagnostic cartridge, but wondering if that's the character ROM. Have all three ROMs on this computer gone bad? Well, it's now reading a cartridge, which is good. So, let's see what it says on the dead test cartridge. We're going to get any flashing? Okay, that's unusual. All right, well, let me do a little bit of research and see. I've been reading up on this, and I know it's definitely not going to be my character ROM, because if it were, then the uh, screen would be normal, except for the characters on it that make up the heading and stuff would be all garbled. I'm getting garbled all over the screen, basically a garbage screen. Now, reading up on that, it looks like it could be U14 or U25. So these two chips right here may be the problem. So what I did is I went through, now I'm not an expert on Commodore 64s. So I went through and I tested out U14 and U25 on one of my working Commodores with the oscilloscope just to see what everything should look out like. Now I can try it on here and see if they pretty much look the same or not. So give it some power and let's just move that a bit there. Let's start. Okay. So U25 looks normal. Now, in case you're wondering on how I know that this looks the same as the one I tested before, I actually have a cheat sheet just off the camera that I drew little diagrams of what the uh, oscilloscope should be showing. So now let's do U14. Okay, well, with the oscilloscope, U25 and U14 seem to pretty much match the um, working Commodore 64 that I have of the same board number. So, yeah, that's not the problem. I guess the next thing to look at will be the eight ROM chips here. First thing I'm going to do is I will tone out a bunch of the pins on these should be connected in uh, series. So I'll tone them out, maybe the, see that way whether there is a uh, broken trace or not. And then I guess we have to look at them on the oscilloscope too. See if we can find any obviously dead chips in there. Let me just reset everything and we'll look. Okay, time to test to see if uh, there's connections made. Now I don't think pin 1 should be connected. Pin 2 I don't think, but I think we start on pin 3 being connected. Yep. All right, all the lines that should be connected are connected, so that's not the problem. So we've tested out the continuity on these memory chips, so now let's test out and see 
how they're looking under the oscilloscope. All right, well, right or wrong, I haven't te um, compared them to one of my working boards, but they're all consistent, so I don't think there's anything wrong with any of the memory chips. So it is time for me to give my technical advisor a call. All right. I have some really good news. Last night, I got onto a call with uh, my technical advisor, Sloopy, this guy right here. If you ever watch the uh, Coco Nation Game on Challenge live that he and I do, it's where we play uh, Coco games live on the air. Well, he's also my technical advisor, and we went over what I've been doing here. I'm very happy to announce that uh, his first suggestions were basically all things that I've already done. The next thing he said is, are there any MOS chips on your board? And I said, well, yeah, both the uh, 6526s, the 6510, and this little guy right here, it's... Uh, it says a 7708 on it, which is a uh, 74LS257 chip. So I swapped out the 6526, didn't make a difference. The only other socketed one on here was this uh, 74LS256. So I swapped that out and, well... Let's go over, plug this board in, and I'll show you what happened. The board's hooked up, ready to go. So this is what happened last night. Ta-da! It's working. So, so far it's been the two ROM chips and this uh, 74LS257 chip. But it appears to be working. All right, it is time to plug in the diagnostic cartridge and let that run for a while. Just to semi-stress test this board, make sure it's still all working, then we'll hook a keyboard up to it and maybe a joystick and try some games. Oh, and I did put the SID chip back in, so we should be able to hear the SID chip. Okay, it is not doing anything. Interesting. So it's getting into the cartridge and then freezing. What happens if I put the dead test in? Hmm. Oh, you know what? There's this foil tape on here that was touching a bunch of the wires down here. I wonder... Uh, now we're getting a little bit of corruption.
Okay, that seems to be working fine. Something in the cartridge port is also not working. You know what? I'm going to clean that cartridge port. Maybe it's just really dirty. Okay, I have my chip reader here, and I have that MOS chip right here, so we'll put it in. And we're going to test it out just to make sure that it's actually bad. So 74257. And test. And there we go. You got two bad bits in there on lines 9 and 10, both bits 4. So this chip's bad. Okay, I have given the cartridge port a good cleaning. I've popped out the SID chip just in case. If it is working, which I don't know whether it's working or not, I don't want to destroy it. So here we go. And uh, okay, not working. That's weird. It's weird that it actually brings up the image and then just doesn't execute anything. All right, well, you know what? I'm going to hook the keyboard up. That's not supposed to happen. Something weird going on with the N key. Okay, so keyboard is not working properly either. So it's not reading a cartridge and the keyboard is not working properly. Hmm. Well, that was a very short-lived celebration. I was so very happy when that Commodore screen came on. And then, wouldn't you know it, uh, tried a cartridge, didn't work, which was disappointing. But hey, at least the computer was still working, so I hooked up a keyboard, and yeah, that's not working either. So it's probably the keyboard input, so probably one of those PLAs, I don't know. But um, yeah, I'm going to have to do a little bit more research on that. One of the things about it is I am certainly running the gambit on this computer. Every time I fix something, something else is wrong with it. So, um, yeah, so far the ROM chips and the logic chip, but we'll see what the next thing that I have to change in it is. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to stop the video here, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, don't forget that a like, a subscribe, and a comment below are all things that help the channel out a lot. But until I figure out what the next step is, and make another video or make another video about something else. I will see you later.